Most of you have been doing mouse ears all wrong. Let me tell you why. So typically, when you have a large print on the edge of the bed, it tends to you know lift a little bit because of a draft or because it's close to the edge of the bed and it's not getting heated enough. So what do we usually do? We add mouse ears, which is typically a circle done in the slicer. And it's typically connected to the print and it's printed as one piece. And let me show you why that's an issue. Because if you are printing as, as one piece, guess what it's going to do? It's going to use that as the edge and it's going to go around the mouse ears and inside, around the mouse ears and inside, and that's going to be your edge. And it's going to fill in like it's part of the 3D print. And that's the issue. But what we really need is for the edges to be independent while still performing the same function of a typical mouse ear addition. So the reason for that is that when you cut away the mouse ears, you don't want that to be part of the print because you lose not only structural integrity, but also the looks. So the way to accomplish that is by moving the walls of the mouse ear by 0.01 millimeters, which is impossible for the slicer not the slicer, but for the 3D printer to accomplish because each nozzle, typically it's a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. The lowest one that people usually use are 0.25, right? You cannot print a 0.01 gap. And the reason we have to make that gap is because if we leave it right on the edge of the 3D printed part, it's going to connect it in the slicer without making any changes. But you do have that gap in the slicer. And once you do that, you basically separate the two pieces. You have two separate prints while still performing the same function because on the first layer, they will connect, they will melt to each other and they will still accomplish that function that we need. And once you get to the post-processing of the part, you will have a clean model with a solid edge and no one will ever know you even use mouse ears. I hope this information was useful to you. This trick definitely saves me a lot of hassle even though I do have to do this on my CAD program instead of in the slicer. But once you see those cleaner prints, you will thank me for it. So enjoy your new way of doing mouse ears. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.